Tonight, today we talk about Little Prelude in C minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. First, I'll play it. As usual, I'll give you some tips on how to practice it. Let's talk about this pattern. Every bar is based on one chord. So the first is it, which is a tonic for this piece, and right hand plays this pattern. And the left hand, which is a tonic, then fifth, third, first degree. I would advise to, to learn this piece first as chords. So just combine all notes of the bar into one chord. You would just play it three times each chord because we have three, four, the time signature. Then second bar, again C minor. Then we move to the next chord, which is a F minor. So it's a C, F and A flat. And we play it three times, one, two, three bar four same chord continues in fifth bar we continue playing f minor inversion in the left hand and right hand has a b d and f right it's very tense chord it also continues for two bars and then we've got back to c minor you're going through like that through the whole piece after you studied it with the chords, then you can proceed to playing it as written. Very easy to make this mistake, like many students do. Many times it's not just because it's higher than the others, it tends to scream too loud. Be careful with that note. Left hand has this very dramatic line. Longer notes usually have more weight and the faster notes are much softer. So when you have this bass note, it's also very easy to play it um, with a very harsh sound that sounds like, again, like it's as if <laughs> we stepped on the cat's tail. <laughs> to avoid this, you need to loosen uh, your wrist and uh, like work with the whole arm, you know, do this rotational movement. Just because we are not going straight from up down, this attack happens slower, attack to the notes happens slower. And by doing that, the sound uh, appears to be still profound, still full, but it doesn't sound so like as if it's someone as a neighbor got upset with you or something. <laughs> so also the same is valid for the right hand when you go. 
So you do slight rotation on this one. Another situation with the pedal, when Bach was composing, the piano as we know, it didn't exist yet. So it was written for either harpsichord or clavichord. Of course, pedal was not there. There was nothing to sustain sounds like, you know, the sound continues, we can remove our hands. So there are arguments about sh should we use the pedal or not for the Bach's pieces? Well, Usually, these are arpeggiated chords we're using in a sort of to give us impression of suspended sound, right? Since we couldn't just suspend them and hear them, uh, composers would just keep repeating the same notes, like arpege arpeggiate the chord, so it would still hang in the air. Should we use the pedal? Yes, just because we can. Since this arpeggiated chord is supposed to suspend the sound, so we just help to suspend the sound. You press the pedal, lift your foot, press again, lift, press, lift, press, and so on till the end. Also, you can slow down in the end, it's called ritenuto or ritardando. Sometimes it's not written there, but traditionally we would slow down slightly to make it more epic. <laughs> you see that symbol over the chord, it's called fermata. Basically, you are the one to decide how long to hold it. If you want to hold it for a day, that's fine. But usually when the sound starts fading, that's pretty much enough to suspend it. So you can just lift your hands and finish your performance. If you found these tips useful, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and go practice. Ciao!